greatest awakening in history. Welcome back. My name is Deborah Peters. I've been MIA a little bit and it's because I've been recalibrating myself. And during that process, I realized that with everything that's going on in the world right now, all the upheaval, all the division, it would be really valuable to record a series of informational videos on what this great awakening really is and how you can navigate it so that you find yourself in a better place of peace and calm and you can still have a life of joy and fulfillment and high level relationships. So what is the great awakening? Well, if I was to say to you that everything that you have been taught about the way the world works, the way reality works, you would probably look at me and say, well, how's that possible? I mean, this is what I'm living. And that would be exactly my point. So as I unpack this for you, I'm going to do it in shorter segments so that you can get this information on the fly, definitely hit the like button below and please subscribe and hit that bell next to the subscribe button because that lets YouTube know that you like my content and it helps more people find it. Obviously you can share it as well and I'd appreciate that greatly. So I actually had a friend of mine that I knew like 25 years ago and we'd lost touch. I moved to another country and I was living in another reality and we had completely lost touch. And of course, you know, with social media, you can find pretty much anybody these days. So through some of our online dialogues, one of the things that she asked me to do was to share my story of how I got to where I'm at through the process of waking myself up to to look at the reality that I was creating through my thoughts, through my emotions, through my feelings and and then with my brain and, and projecting into my daily movements and relating and conversations that actually enabled me to move past a great, great deal of limitation. Limitation that I will share with you as we go through this that you could probably not even imagine. So I've been looking for a way of explaining this. And so now I feel like this is the time. I didn't want to, you know, put it out there sort of in a way that I couldn't take it far enough that would give you enough tools to be able to manage your own awakening. So here's the deal. Pretty much everything that we have been taught in our lifetime is a fabrication. And it's a fabrication that is passed down to us by perhaps loving, meaningful, well-meaningful, caring adults, uh, partners, teachers, parents, coaches, and even the material that we're taught in school. So there creates within our mind that there's this big separation between who we are and the rest of us. You know, in our mind, we see ourselves as being incomplete, as being less than. And there's the biggest block right there is that we are taught that we have to jump through all these hoops, that we have to look a certain way, that we have to act a certain way, we have to drive a certain vehicle, we have to live in a certain neighborhood, we have to know certain people in order to be enough, in order to be lovable, in order to be acceptable. And none of that None of that is true, you see. That's just a program, just like a program on your computer. You know, you plug in some software and it performs a certain way. 
but that doesn't mean that's the only software on the planet. You know, you can you can load a lot of different software to complete and create a lot of different outcomes and projects and capacity within your computer as is the same with you. So essentially what happens is this. So from zero to seven, those are the imprint years. And we are basically like little sponges. You know, we come into the world, we, we are just completely unconditional in who we're being and we watch and absorb everything that happens around us and to us. And so we become the very thing that we see in our environment. If we grow up in an environment of struggle and hardship and pain and suffering, then we establish this model of the world that says that that is what the world is. It's filled with pain and struggle and suffering and poverty. And then we actually start to live that out because then from seven to 14 are the modeling years. So now what we're doing is we're going out more into the world more freely on our own and we are modeling what we have been taught about ourselves and about the world through our interactions with others. And so I always tell parents, you know, I used to do a lot of couples coaching and sometimes there was children involved. And I would say to the parents, you know, your child is, is going to model someone because that's just the way human growth works. Who do you want them to model? Do you want them to model you? Do you, are you, are, is the behavior, is the reality that you're creating something that you would like your children to perpetuate? Or would you like them to model something of a higher vibration, of a higher level of existence? I think most of us as parents could agree that we all want our children to be, do, and have more than what we experienced. And, or do you want your child to model the gangbanger or the kid at school that's the bully or or the or the kid at school that's excelling in their grades and their accomplishments you really get to make this distinction and then you begin to realize that indeed you are influencing and you are programming your children based on the programming that you received as you were growing up and, you know, I'm not condemning parents in any way here. I'm simply saying is that we do the best we can with the resources we have. And so when we pass this on to our offspring, then we're literally perpetuating the belief system, the paradigm that we're living, whether we like it or not. So that's this, the biggest awareness here is that you can change that programming any time and then you know from 14 to 21 those are the socialization years so now we are out into the world usually in a great way and we're either experiencing a lot of struggle and fear and doubt and insecurities and low self-worth or we're experiencing confidence and happiness and our lives are really an exciting adventure. You know, we have our imagination still intact. It hasn't been programmed out of us. Therefore, we're able to go after our dreams and really start to self-actualize our potential, you know, who we are. But the thing is this, is that along this path, in many societies, in many environments, in, in many cultures, in many um, socioeconomic structures and cultural codes and religions that we grow up in, we're taught that there's, we're less than, there's something wrong with us, that we have to follow some set of man-made rules in order to get by, that we should never ask for too much and we should always just accept what's handed out to us. We are taught that 
we can't we can't run our own bodies that we have to go to, to to doctors and we have to have someone else tell us what's wrong with us and then prescribe to us something to fix us through medications through surgeries you know we're taught that our bodies are supposed to look a certain way or we're just not enough and we don't fit in we're taught that if we don't drive a certain car by a certain age or own a certain amount of property in a certain zip code that we really didn't measure up that we're really a failure in life we're also taught that we should go on through post-secondary education get a degree look for a job and then have this corporation take care of us and and have the government take care of us and essentially what that does is it, it's you giving your power away in in little bite sizes or big chunks depending on the scenario to the point where you just feel like a victim and rightly so because you've been buying into this structure that is a program you've been buying into this program that is designed designed in every sense of the word to keep you weak it's designed to keep you small it's designed to have you always living your life thinking that there's something wrong with you thinking that you're not enough and that life is hard thinking that life is a struggle and the only way that you can be happy is to buy these goods and services and to make yourself on the external look a certain way but inside you're like dying and you're in pain and you're lonely and you're unfulfilled and so what do you do to deal with that you you eat overeat you consume alcohol drugs prescription drugs you medicate yourself with television and you know what my one of my mentors used to call TikTok, and i'm not talking about the social media app i'm talking about you know lack of wherewithal that you create your own reality so how does that actually work so creating your own reality is really coming from a place of enough self-awareness just like when you were a little kid and you had this robust imagination that you felt unstoppable and you could create anything you could <laughs> you could fly you know you could you could do anything you just felt invincible and that you know i'm going to use this term lightly that that gets beaten out of us whether it's physically beaten out of us or it gets beaten out of us through programming and conditioning if it gets you know it might get beaten out of us through watching television and all the advertisements it might get beaten out of us by our families telling us you know get your head out of the clouds you know get realistic you know you just need to like get a job and get a paycheck and be happy with what you have in life and it starts to chip away at our connection to that part of ourselves that is unstoppable that is infinite you know you can be just as great as any other person on this planet you can be the next einstein you can be the next i'm trying to find superheroes that are conscious to use as examples for you and it's really difficult if i throw out some names of people that are popular because of their accomplishments in the material world but in terms of their integrity and their consciousness they're completely asleep and taking advantage of people through their egos 
then it, it, it kind of bastardizes this message. So I'm really searching hard to come up with people that have done really good work and been game changers in the planet without raping and pillaging people at a mind level. It's really difficult because you could be as big as the next big person, you know, that has billions of dollars and is making a difference in the world, but they're making a difference in the world from a very negative place, like, like Bill Gates, for example, just, t you know, taking advantage of humanity's weakness and convincing you all that you can't heal your own body. Nothing could be further from the truth. You know, we have a blueprint for perfect health and that blueprint gets a little bit dodgy and wobbly from eating bad foods and not exercising. And most importantly, it gets dodgy from thinking negative thoughts and being really hard on yourself emotionally, but it can be repaired and it can be restored. And that can happen through creating a healthy lifestyle for yourself, you know, getting conscious, learning to meditate, getting regular vigorous exercise, staying in a higher vibrational state of being, of happiness, joy, faith, trust, you know, these kinds of mindset tools and, and health really change and enable you to heal. Just your posture alone, you know, having a good quality, upright, strong posture, that sends a message to your cells and enables you to heal. So this is how it works. So there's a thing called Hebb's Law. So Hebb's Law, you can Google it. Hebb's Law says that neurons that fire together are wiring together. Neurons that fire apart, wire apart. So, so when you're looking at dis-ease, those are neurons that are firing apart. It's like, it's like a, um, a contradiction. It's like split energy where you've got, you know, I want this in my life, but I don't believe I can have it. I want to create this experience, but I don't deserve it. I would like to have ease, joy, and flow, and millions of dollars in the bank, but that's way too hard. Who am I to ask for that kind of experience or money or freedom? You know, it's that constant, you know, friction, split energy. When we wire our neurons simultaneously, we create new pathways of thought. And this is the great awakening. This is what they don't want you to know, is that you have the ability to regenerate any part of your being, any part of your life. Nothing's permanent. And by changing your thought, and by changing your nutrition, and by changing your exercise, and by meditating, you can completely take control of your reality and therefore you don't need anything outside of yourself to tell you who you can be. You don't need anyone to give you permission to thrive. You don't need any job to save you, to pay your bills. You don't need a government to give you some kind of stimulus or or security, you don't need them. And they know you don't need them. And the thing is, is when you figure out that you don't need anything or anyone outside of you, then all of the people, all of the players in your life that have worked that to their advantage over you in your relationship dynamic, and that includes your family, your spouse, your children, your parents, your neighbors, your boss, the government. It includes everybody. When you realize that you don't need anything outside of you to feel good, to live long, to be vibrant, to create money, when you realize 
that you are a free sovereign being then everyone that uses these control tactics of misinformation to keep you small so that it works to their advantage they're powerless they are completely powerless they have nothing on you and when they have nothing on you there's no reason for them to continue to sit in their chair of authority over you all of them and furthermore there's no reason for money out of your pocket to go and put money in their pocket so that they can live multi-million and billion dollar lifestyles while you continue to suffer so this is my first rollout of this great awakening and it's material that i've known for years many 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 years and the reason i haven't really said it like this before is i've been busy <laughs> working on me and recalibrating me and with the turn of events that's happening globally between covid and the riots and the divide and conquer that the media and certain people in deep state control are using to separate people in society so we don't actually keep each other informed of what real consciousness is is you know it just takes a minute to recalibrate this stuff so be gentle with yourself be kind to yourself start meditating every single day the greatest gift you can give yourself is to meditate every single day and the more triggered you are in a negative way like with shame or fear or doubt or just feeling out of control then meditate a couple times you know you can meditate 2 3 times a day and they don't have to be long meditations 10 to 15 minutes if you go into my channel i've got a couple of meditations there just start to play with it and develop your own thing you don't have to use mine all the time you don't have to use anybody's all you all you really need to do is is listen to a fan and just let yourself relax for set a timer on your phone and 10 or 15 minutes and boom you're in a whole other reality right there cuz then consciousness can come down and communicate with you and you realize you'll realize through that repetition i am a free sovereign being all right this is debra have a blessed day hit the like hit the thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell i'll see you soon bye